so in the previous class uh, we discussed about the uh, henry's law and the dalton's law and in this class uh, we will basically know about uh, first uh, we will know about the vapor pressure of the solution okay so first we have to know what is the actually the vapor pressure that is the important this is a glass it is a uh, contains a volatile solvent it is a contain a volatile solvent like it could be dcm okay and it could be the ether this type of the volatile solvent uh, is there in this glass now so volatile solvent means so whatever gaseous phase of the solvent will be there uh, over the solvent surface this is the solvent surface over the solvent surface there will be the uh, gaseous phase of the solvent so this is the gaseous phase and this is the liquid phase so this gaseous phase will create a pressure on the solvent surface that is called actually vapor pressure that is called vapor pressure okay so whatever we are taking the volatile solvent corresponding the volatility of the solvent the vapor pressure of the solvent will be the different which solvent is the more volatile that means suppose more volatile solvent more volatile solvent means which have greater vapor pressure okay greater vapor pressure, pressure than the less volatile solvent that is the most important thing okay so so we have to know the which solvent is the more volatile and which is the less volatile for that case but here when we are using the volatile solvent that means there will be a vapor pressure of the solvent surface so suppose i have a component so so this is a uh, uh, one volatile solvent i am saying it is a component it is a component one okay so another component another one volatile solvent is also is there okay so there will be vapor pressure also so i am saying it is a component two so two different component one and component two two different volatile solvent is there this is component one this is component two now whatever volatile solvent is there i am saying it has the mole fraction x1 and it has also the mole fraction x2 okay so it is a pure volatile solvent it is also a pure volatile solvent so whatever vapor pressure will be created on the over the solvent surface i am saying this vapor pressure is p10 similarly here also for the component 2 the vapor pressure will be p20 okay so vapor pressure this is the p10 is the pure is the vapor pressure of the pure solvent p20 it also the vapor pressure of the pure solvent 2 or the component 2 and this is the mole fraction this is the mole fraction so this is the pure case there is a no problem it is a pure case and we know that also from the uh, henry's law the vapor pressure p10 is proportional to the mole fraction x1 so p10 equal to k of h x1 so similarly for the component 2 for the component 2 p20 proportional to the x2 so p20 equal to 
के एच इनटू एक्स टू सो दिस इज़ द हेनरीज़ लॉ इफ वी अप्लाई फॉर द कंपोनेंट वन एंड द कंपोनेंट टू दैट दैट इज़ द केस बट इफ वी मिक्स दिस टू वोलाटाइल सॉल्वेंट इन ए वन पॉट सपोज़ जिने वन पॉट आई एम मिक्स स्टफ दिस टू वोलाटाइल सॉल्वेंट ओके so there is the two volatile solvent is there and also i am saying that these two volatile solvent are the miscible to each other they are the miscible okay so suppose so two volatile solvent is there and they are the miscible so when they will be the miscible that means they will not give the pure they are not the pure in this situation here what is happening here the two solvent are the mixing two volatile solvent are the miscible so they are the mixed so they are not pure in this case so here in this case they will not show the pure vapor pressure they will show the partial vapor pressure so for the component one they will show partial pressure p1 for the component two, they will show the partial pressure P two, but they are the mole fraction will be the same. Mole fraction will be the X one and X two because the composition two volatile solvent are the miscible. Okay, but this volatile solvent, whatever the mole fraction is there, it will be also there in the mixing solvent. Okay, so these are the mole fraction X one X two, but they are. The vapor pressure will be the changed. In this case, these are the pure. That's why they are showing they are the pure vapor pressure. But in this case, whatever vapor pressure will be created on the solvent surface, that will be not the pure for the component one, component two. They will be partial vapor pressure of the component one and the component two. Suppose the total vapor pressure suppose this total vapor pressure i am saying this total vapor pressure will be the sum of partial pressure of component 1 and sum of partial pressure of the component 2 because in this mixing condition i am saying that the partial pressure of the component 1 is p1 and partial vapor pressure of the component 2 is the p2 so total vapor pressure is creating over the solvent is p1 plus p2 so total vapor pressure is the p1 plus p2 okay so there is the no pure so there is the no pure vapor pressure there will be the partial vapor pressure okay so in this condition we have the p total equal to p1 plus p2 so where i will write here p1 equal to the partial vapor pressure of component 1 and p2 equal to partial vapor pressure of component 2 okay and p total equal to p1 plus p2 okay and and we know that and we know that from the hendrix law uh, p1 varies x1 and p2 varies x2 so in this case p1 varies x1 when p1 equal to p10 x1 so here the p1 is equal to the pure vapor pressure this is the pure vapor pressure similarly for p2 varies x2 equal to p2 so on p20 and x2 so here the p20 equal to the pure vapor pressure of component 2 so we have the two equation p1 equal to p10 into x x1 p2 equal to p20 into x2 we will put this two equation in here what will be happened x1 plus p20 into x2 now so in this mixing solution 
total mole fraction let us consider the total mole fraction x1 plus x2 equal to 1 so x1 equal to 1 minus x2 so now i will put here 1 minus x2 plus p20 x2 so p10 minus p10 x2 plus p20 x2 so p10 plus uh, p2 x2 minus sorry sorry uh, sorry p10 plus x2 p20 minus p10 so this is the p total so if we look equation carefully we can say that three four points here this p total is directly correlated with the mole fraction x2 and also it is directly correlated with this partial pressure sorry the pure vapor pressure of component one but it is the correlated with this mole fraction of x2 that means if we change the mole fraction of x2 mole fraction of component 2 the p total pressure this p total will be the changed but now how it will be the change if we change this x2 0 to 1 suppose 0 to 1 how this p total will be the change but we have to remember that component 1 for the component 1 x1 the mole fraction p1 the partial pressure p10 the pure vapor pressure or the component 2 x2 the mole fraction and p2 is the partial vapor pressure and p20 is pure vapor pressure now what will be the curve what will be the relation and if we change the mole fraction of component 2 0 to 1 how it will how the total vapor pressure will be the change over the solvent layer over the solution layer so that is the fundamental thing if we draw here now this is the important thing suppose this is the x1 equal to 1 and x1 equal to 0 x2 equal to 0 x1 equal uh, sorry x2 equal to 1 I am changing the mole fraction. Okay, here I am changing the mole fraction x2. X2 is changing. So x2 is 0, 0 to 1. When x2 is going to 0 to 1, then mole fraction is uh, of the component 1 is going to 1 to 0. This is the vapor pressure. This is the vapor pressure. Okay, now let us consider that component 1 this is the component 2 sorry component 2 is suppose this component 2 is more volatile i have said that which solvent is the more volatile there will have the greater vapor pressure than the less volatile solvent so component 2 is more volatile that means that means p2 greater than p1 that means p20 greater than p1 that means the pure vapor pressure of the component 2 is greater than the pure vapor pressure of the component 1. So, vapor pressure P2 is more. So, here you see when x2 is 0, when x2 is 0, that means there is the no component. So, so x2 is 0 means there is the no component 2. Only in the component, only component 1 is present. But when x2 is 1, that means only there is a component 2 is there. So in this case, in this case, whatever vapor pressure will uh, show that is corresponding the P20. So similarly for the, it will be the P10. But I have, uh, uh, but here I have considered that uh, P20 greater than P10. That's why it is the higher, so that's why it is showing the higher vapor pressure than the P10. So in this combination of the two component, when x2 is 0 that means component 1 is present only component 1 is present and it will show the pure vapor pressure that is the p10 but when the x2 equal to 1 that's been only component 2 is present 
component one is not there that means this solution will show the pure vapor pressure of the component two now this is a volatile solvent only their component one is there that means the x equal to one component one is there now i am adding the component two i am adding the component two that means the mole fraction of the x2 is gradually increasing so when the mole fraction of component two is gradually increasing then the vapor pressure of the solution also will be increasing uh, because i am adding extra component extra so it is the gradually increasing so it will be the increase 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 is there when it will be the only the x2 then it will show the p2 zero so similarly similarly so it will be curved like that so similarly for x2 to x0 it will be like that so this is for p1 case and this is for p2 case and this is the total vapor pressure p total okay so this line for the p2 when we are increasing the x2 when we are increasing the x2 but when we are increasing the x1 then this is the this line for the x1 and this is for the x2 and this is for the p total so here the p equal to p1 plus p2 so there is the three lines one is the this line this line is represents the p1 this line is represent the p2 and this line is represent the total pressure p1 plus p2 okay so this is the this is the vapor pressure where uh, where the two volatile solvent are the mixing to each other uh, so liquid liquid solvent is there then it will show this type of the graphical representation so in this form we have shown here uh, p total p total equal to we have shown here the p total equal to p01 plus p01 plus p20 minus p10 into x2 that is called actually the raoult's law the raoult's law actually raoult's law is there where the total vapor pressure of over the solution is proportional is actually related to the mole fraction of the x2 but if i consider if if we consider uh, the mole fraction here the mole fraction is x1 x2 if i consider the mole fraction is for the component one is y1 and component two is the y2 okay so in the vapor phase so so, so these are the x1 x2 are the solution phase but x y1 y2 i am i am considering the mole fraction of y1 and y2 of the component one and the component two in the vapor phase oh okay so this is for the vapor phase so in this case what will be there in this case the partial pressure p1 will be the y1 and the p total because it is the we uh, so it is the case of the vapor phase that's why the partial pressure of the component one is proportional to the total pressure p and here the proportional constant is the y1 which is the mole fraction so similarly for the p2 equal to y2 p total so in general we can write here p1 equal to y1 p total so this is for the vapor phase this is for the vapor phase when there will say the mole fraction of the solvent in the vapor phase uh, then we will uh, follow that law otherwise we will follow the route law so now there is the interesting thing is that we know the we know the um, henry's law that uh, whatever we know the henry's law that when a liquid is there whatever vapor pressure will be creating on the surface this vapor pressure is proportional to the mole fraction okay 
So then P equal to KH into X, where we know that KH is equal to the Henry's constant. And here also we know that according to the Raoult's law, a PY equal to XI into PI zero. Because we know that we have the, the this is the partial pressure it's proportional to the XI. Here also the uh, partial pressure is proportional to the X and both X are the mole fraction. But only the difference is the PY zero and here the KH. Here the KH is the Henry's constant. Here the PI zero equal to the pure vapor pressure of the component. Now, if suppose there is a uh, there is a uh, solvent. So there is a suppose there is a solvent. This solvent is totally volatile. Suppose it is the more volatile. Okay, so it is the more volatile. It's the more volatile. So when it will be the more volatile, then it will actually exist. Then it will be exist in the vapor phase. Uh, then it will fo follow the Henry's law. In this case, when it will be the more volatile, then in this case, the Raoult's law will follow the Henry's law. So in both case, the vapor pressure of the volatile components is directly proportional to the mole fraction of the component. But only the proportionality constant is the different for the Raoult's law. This is uh, uh, for the Raoult's law P10 and Henry's law Ks. But when the component is the more volatile, then it will go to the Henry's law. So this is the uh, two case where we have discussed here when the liquid liquid two components which are the volatiles and the miscible, then what will be the vapor pressure is there. And also we have here shown the Raoult's law and the Henry's law. Now the vapor pressure of the solution of the solid in liquid. This is a interesting thing. Vapor pressure, vapor pressure of solution of solids in liquids. Okay, so let us consider I have a solution. I have a solution. Okay, here the solvent is pure water okay and solute is suppose nacl okay so solute is uh, solid so this is the solid and solvent is the water okay so what will be the vapor pressure and what is the um, it will be decrease or the increase that is the main thing so suppose let us consider a glass it is full of water only water is there only water is there so when there is water so that means there is that is the not solution that is a pure water solvent so when it is a pure water solvent that means whatever molecules will be sorry whatever molecules will be present on the surface that will be the only for the water so this is the molecule these are the molecules of the water molecules okay so in this case so in the surface in the surface whatever molecules is there that these are the water molecules so in this case whatever vapor pressure will be creating on the surface okay that is for suppose this vapor pressure is p1 so that is for the water that is for the water only for the water so that's why i am writing the vapor pressure of uh, over the sol uh, solution surface sorry solvent surface equal to p water because it is a pure solvent that's why i am writing the vapor pressure of the water is a pure okay but now it is a solution of now it is a solution of water plus NaCl so it is a solution and it is a solvent 
in this solvent we are adding a solute NaCl okay when we are adding the NaCl then in this solution surface some molecules will be the water molecules but some molecules will be the NaCl molecule okay so this these are the NaCl molecule these are the NaCl molecule and this is the water molecule so in the pure case whatever molecules is there on the surface these are the water molecules but when we are going to the solution that means we have to add the solute like the NaCl from the outside then this NaCl molecules will go to the solution surface so then the sum water molecule will be the replaced by the NaCl molecule so when the sum water molecules will be the replaced by the initial molecules then the vapor pressure then the vapor pressure of the p water will be the less because number of the water molecules in the sol in the solution surface is the less than the pure case that's why when we are going to the solution then the vapor pressure whatever vapor pressure will be there of the water that will be the less than the pure case that's why whatever when we will see the pure that means the vapor pressure of the solvent or the solvent is the greater than the corresponding the vapor pressure of in solution so this is the case when when we are making a solution with a solid solute in the liquid solvent okay so vapor pressure will be always less than so there is a conclusion if i write a conclusion or if we say the conclusion that in a pure liquid the entire surface is occupied by molecules of the liquid in a solution so the surface has molecule of both so here is both initial is there also water molecules also is there so solute and the solvent hence the fraction of the uh, surface covered by the solvent molecules gets reduced as a consequence the number of the solvent molecules escaping from the surface get the reduce so when the NaCl molecules will going to the solid surface then water molecules some water molecules will be the reduced so vapor pressure also will be the reduced so the decrease in vapor pressure of the solvent depends on the quality of the non volatile solute present in the solution that is the respectively that's we have to know uh, which or what type of the uh, volatile and the non volatile solute we have we are using okay so this is the case where uh, when we are making a solution uh, where the solvent is liquid and solid is the solid and what will be the vapor pressure of course when we are making a solution there the vapor pressure will be the decrease so if i if i draw a curve for that case for that case uh, so this is the vapor pressure and this is the mole fraction of solvent this is a solvent so when we are increasing the mole fraction then obviously the vapor pressure will be the increased uh, suppose there is a vapor pressure so suppose x equal to 1 here so in this case so 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 this this vapor pressure is the pure vapor pressure so this is the for the pure solvent this is for the pure solvent okay and this this portions are the the solution this is the for the solution case this is for the solution case okay and this portion and this this vapor pressure for the solvent okay because they are only the solvent is there here also we are uh, apply the route slow p1 varies the x1 so p1 equal to the x1 p10 so in this case also route slow will be applied so in this class i have discussed about the uh, vapor pressure of the liquid liquid solution there will have uh, route slow 
and also uh, how the Raoult's law and the Henry's law we have compared and also we have discussed the vapor pressure of the solution of the solid in liquids now i will uh, now i will show some mcq question whatever i discussed in the previous class based on that based on that i already gave uh, the mcq and that mcq i will just uh, show you how to calculate uh, and how to solve this type of the mcq question so the first mcq question is that what is defined as the concentration of dissolved solute in a solvent beyond which none of it if added to the solvent will increase the concentration the further more so this is the first mcq question the answer will be a this is the solubility okay this is the very interesting so when a solvent in a solvent a particular solute will be the dissolved and this solute concentrations will be the increased already i said i mentioned uh, that is called the solubility second question which of the following solvent would most likely dissolve in three amino propane three or so we we know that more polar solvent will be uh, more polar more polar that means the more polar solute will be the dissolved in the more polar solvent and less polar will be the less polar so three amino propane to all if i i draw this structure one two three okay so there is the three amino one all that means this is the oh and that will be the ch2 that will be the ch2 so this is the three amino to all so this compound is more polar okay because we is also is there nh2 also they are eh? so this is the more polar solvent that's why that's why it will be the more polar solvent so 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 this so so this compound is a more polar so this compound will be soluble in the more polar solvent so this is the phenol this is the ethanol this is the water and this is the acetone acetone is the less polar solvent if i compare these three solvent water is the more polar solvent so it will be soluble in the water now the process of the dissolution of the solute in the solvent place even after the saturation so after saturation it is it is actually takes place okay so if you see the dissolution process dissolution process means when uh, the solute will be uh, when the solute is uh, going to dissolve in the solvent okay so this is the uh, uh, this is the dissolution process okay after saturation saturation means somehow their dissolution process and the crystallization process are the equilibrium or we can say in a uh, another language the saturation means uh, maximum amount of the solute are dissolves in a particular solvent that is called the saturation solution uh, but if i add the more solute in this solution by heating but by sacking uh, we can soluble also so that's why after saturation also the this process can be happened now the question four is in a saturation solution with the endothermic dissolution how does the concentration of the dissolved solute change with the increasing then decreasing the temperature that i mentioned the decrease first will be the decrease then it will be the increase next question is that how does the solubility of the gas change in the liquid as described that means this is the liquid phase and this is the gas if i create the more pressure over the gas then that gas will be the dissolves in the liquid that means it will be increasing with the increasing the pressure okay so what will be the answer in this case the answer c so it will be the for the pressure case but for the temperature case if we uh, increasing the temperature if we increase the temperature then entropy of the gas will be the increased when the entropy of 
the gas will be increased, then they will be not the soluble in the liquid. That's why option C is the correct answer. Now, that is the interesting question is there. When, when the carbon dioxide is introduced into aerated drinks and the sealed, what is the nature of the car between the partial pressure of the carbon dioxide and its concentration in the drink? That means it is showing that when we are increasing the carbon dioxide also is gas. So basically what is happening here? The here we are trying to soluble of the gas in liquid. Carbon dioxide is gas. So carbon dioxide we are trying to soluble in the drinking water drink so what will be the car uh, when the partial pressure of the carbon dioxide okay so it will be the positive slope why i am saying that po positive slope because okay when we are increasing when we are increasing the concentration of the drink when we are increasing the pressure on the pressure of the carbon dioxide then it will be the dissolves in the when then it will be the dissolves in the uh, liquid okay when it will be the dissolved in liquids that means the concentration of the carbon dioxide in this liquid will be also increased so this is the suppose concentration and this is the suppose the partial pressure so when we are increasing the partial pressure then the concentration also will be the increase so it will be increased the positive slope so it will be the positive slope because we know that sorry so uh, we know that when a solute suppose a solid solute when a solid solute is going to dissolve in a solution then concentration is increased so in here also the similar case here we are trying to soluble of the carbon dioxide it is a gas so we, when we are trying to soluble in of the carbon dioxide gas in the liquid so we have to create the more pressure on the carbon dioxide gas so when it will be the dissolved in the liquid then the concentration also the increased that's why the partial pressure is increasing also the concentration will be the increased the second the seven number question it is very interesting i will uh, I, I i will leave this question for the students uh, you guys please try this question because this is the very easy questions this is the henry's law questions and so we know that the henry's law uh, is equal to the k is equal to x okay just you you just put the 1.67 the kilo bar the pressure and also the here also it is the mention the constant also is there so you have to just calculate the more fraction so it is a very important and it is a uh, very interesting question you guys just try it uh, this question is a very interesting if you see what is the concentrations of n2 in a fresh water stream in equilibrium with the air at 298 kelvin and one atmosphere given value of the k is equal to so here the k is is given so k is equal to 0 0.00060 0 mole per kg bar okay so this is the question so partial pressure nitrogen equal to suppose mole fraction nitrogen i have considered the x into into total pressure so it is actually so this question actually uh, I have just written the equation. Okay, so this question actually based on Raoult's law. Okay, so I taught this Raoult's law. You guys also try this question. Next class I will uh, show you how it will be that. Okay, because it is corresponding the Raoult's law. So now the question is nine. At NTP, the solubility of the natural gas in water is zero point eight mole of gas uh, per kg what is the henry uh, henry's law constant of the nature this is a very interesting question and it is also a uh, very easy question uh, 
so here you guys just apply suppose this is the solubility solubility you just consider the solubility is equal to 0 0.8 mole okay and you guys just apply the uh, law for the mole fraction law the, uh, suppose the mole fraction of the natural gas x n g equal to n n g by n n g as n w this law you guys just apply for that question you will get the answer there will be the nothing and the last question is which of the following compounds which of the following compounds uh, release the heat when the dissolves in water that is a very easy question we have to know in presence of water in presence of water which actually release the heat that means it is the exothermic reaction okay it is a it is a exothermic reaction exothermic reaction that's 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 why it is a releasing the heat that's mean the delta a is or the uh, exothermic reaction the delta is less than zero okay so the answer will be the calcium chloride we know that ccl2 when the calcium chloride in added the water uh, it will creating the heat uh, because it is exothermic reaction and that's why the delta a is less than zero so these are the 10 mcq question here i have shown and most of the question i have done and three or four mathematical question uh, i have given for the student you guys just try it whatever uh, i have taught uh, based on that uh, based on the routes law henry's law uh, you guys can solve the question if you have any problem you can ask me in the next class okay thank you very much